Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you are new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing and also turn your notification bells on. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you so much for loving Value Farm. We love you guys so much. Well, today we are back at the farm and of course we want to also share ideas of what is really happening at Value Farm, what we are doing, our progress so far. And of course we want to learn from you guys as well because you're part of this family, we want to learn from one another and there's a lot really happening at the farm. So today, because of so many requests from so many of you, most of you wanted to construct that temporal structure of the pig house because it's affordable it is cost effective most especially for the um, for the beginners this is really very good for you for starters this is where we you can start from and this is where we also started from so we wanted to share with you some of the things that you need to put into consideration and also some of the things that we can improve as well what we have learned from using this temporal structure remember guys this is a no smell temporal structure and we are using imo so we've really learned a lot it is over like seven months using this structure and it's time to update you guys on what we have learned from the structure what you can do what you can improve and what we don't want you to do that we did previously i have my co-director on standby as well to also educate us more and also tell us his side is his opinion let me say like his opinion of how he has felt about this structure and how it is and where we are moving to. So let's come with me so that we can be able to meet him right here. Hi Grafton. Hello, hello, hello. How is your morning? Ah, my morning is going okay. So far as my co-director mentioned, my name is Grafton to some of you. Um, I, of course, Gregory is my first name. Mm. Um, you know, it's always nice to be back at the farm. Exactly, it's so much happening. But this this video idea came from all of the comments that you guys send in, all of the requests. Mm. And of course, as an organization, uh, our goal is to always be transparent. True. And to always come up with ways to try to help you guys learn from some of our mistakes and sharing our victories. True. So what we're standing on here is actually the byproduct from the IMO. Yeah, this is the manure, guys. <laughs> We're standing on top of the manure from this building. And what's amazing about this, this is grade A fertilizer, organic fertilizer. Exactly. Because um, some of you who live in the States, or if you're in the UK, where there's more restriction on having pigs, uh, and as far as a commercial enterprise, yeah, uh, you know one of the biggest things they, they tag you with is environmental impact. Okay. Of the actual waste from the pigs, the byproducts. The one of the main benefit of having IMO mm -hmm. is that you eliminate the impacts to the environment. To the environment, that greatly. is greatly. Yes, the biogas is still there. However, in terms of actually disseminating the waste, right? Because most people that use the standard cement method, they just wash it they away. They just wash away. It goes into a drainage. Then they have to find a way to clean that drain, and it's very messy. In fact, in the long run, it ends up costing you more true so this method here once you actually pack your imo wood chips and you you want to use this method you can actually keep this in the actual for the bedding yeah at least seven months and when it's finished it's going to start to turn more to a dust like soil. consistency mm. and it becomes dust right it becomes like actual soil but that's actually rich fertile organic fertilizer so true I wouldn't waste it <laughs> because <laughs> we can't you can really actually waste bag it. this up mm -hmm. and sell it for at least 150 to 200,000 per bag. Per bag, yeah. But we're going to use it into our own garden. Yeah. And But part of the reason we also wanted to do this video was to also show you a, in this temporary structure what worked really well, what we've learned, True. and things we could have done differently. What I should really say about this temporary structure, you see this one here, it has been here for over seven months. So of course we upgraded. We have our permanent structure right there. Yeah. And this one here is we it are now did the job. It did the job really. Really well. Really well and we really appreciate like it being there. It yeah. was for the beginning. We were also, you know, starting up as well. And of course, when you're starting up a farm, there's so much that you require to put into the investment. The pigs, of course, then also structures and everything. So having this one really saved us so much. And of course, some of the things that I should really say about this temporal structure is how we constructed it. First of all, it is not similar to the permanent structure from the bedding. The bedding, 
we didn't have the flooring under we had we dug the real deep natural bed which that, is also fun which is also very very good i think the number one thing here mm. i wish we've know we knew then mm. as much as we know now is that on the borders we did actually put a cement yeah. foundation but we, it should have been deeper right? true true it should have been deeper and slightly higher because of course pigs are always going to want to root yeah dig and as they get bigger they get smarter and they get stronger that's what i wanted to do <laughs> and to tell them that way if they grow bigger you have to think otherwise that's why you need to implement some other things like on the sides you see these iron sheets here you see here so the thing is we have poles that we put on the sides make sure you have poles everywhere because if they're a bit distant or there's some spacing pigs can easily go through them well yeah they can they will, they're gonna want to root believe me they're gonna want to push out the iron sheet yeah and i say i think in the b-roll we'll actually show you guys some of the images later on in the video or even <laughs> earlier in the video yeah um but ultimately they can push their way through they can end up cutting themselves cutting themselves yeah. so the key here is to actually give them a little bit more space um especially when it comes to the iron sheet right yeah. if you you, you can have the iron sheet as an additional layer of protection for both wind and rain to keep them cool. Because again, you guys know pigs don't have any sweat glands. Yeah, yeah, true. So as it gets warm, they can get very mm -hmm. hot. They can have heat stroke very easily. Yeah. So you definitely want to give them some shade. You want to give them comfort from the elements. Yeah. But in terms of the foundation here, the foundational wall was very shallow. Yeah, it was and a again, quick And this was built in a very short period of time i think this was built in like a day and a half because we had the pigs basically living outside for most of the most of the time and as the the season changed we got a lot more rain than we anticipated exactly so we had to very quickly adjust on the fly mm. and that's how we came up with this concept but it has done the job for some of you out there who actually want to start this mm. we this is these are ways we can actually stretch the life mm of this temporary structure it could basically become a, a, a semi-permanent semi if not permanent because what we're gonna what we plan on doing with this now because most of our pigs are actually pregnant yeah <laughs> true and we're expecting a lot more piglets, piglets yeah so this is also going to continue to come handy this is lance <laughs> and because of that we need more space so again we're going to turn into this old trusty structure to give us more time and of course more mileage true for what we're gonna do to it and um we'll keep you guys updated Update on, that, on as well. that yeah true but for now uh what i would say for sure in terms of the actual timber that was used eucalyptus eucalyptus it, it worked right yeah the and it's still working mm. were not many i think we use i think roughly 30 yeah so iron sheets here mm. and the nails were very inexpensive We're talking about kg what? because like five thousand five thousand okay. So it wasn't that very expensive as so well. Economically, this was very, very smart. Yeah. To start out with. I would highly recommend this if you don't have a big budget when you first start. Yeah. Right? Then another thing mm -hmm. that I also wanted to also advise them, like the feeding troughs. Yeah. We need to emphasize on the feeding troughs mm -hmm. and the drinkers. Why the feeding trough has to have concrete, at least because, like he has already said, they really dig, they love digging down. So if your feeding trough is shallow or you've just used only bricks, Trust me, you'll find that it has disorganized it already. So the feeding trough, at least put in some concrete so that even if they dig under, it is not going to go anywhere. The feeding troughs here work really well. We didn't really have much of an issue with it. Mm. What we discovered with this temporary structure, however, it was the actual water. Yeah. And the type of um, water trap that we built were effective, but they were incredibly tedious to clean. Yeah. But what we learned from here, we implemented in the new structure well, we actually built the new water catch water trough, where yeah. it was longer and yeah. it was built on a t on a tilt, so to speak, yeah. at, an, at an angle so that when the piglets or the pigs would drink, whatever residual water coming from the nipples would actually have an actual runway. To the drainage. To the drainage so that we didn't have to constantly come and, and get pull the, water the water out, out and, you and know? fish it out. Mm. But we very quickly realized like that was an additional task that we did not anticipate. Yeah. So everything here was fine apart from the spacing between the poles. The poles, yeah. And and that was like a big issue. That they made me wonder in which on. poles, this pose down, down here. Down here. So instead of just having three poles, we should have gone with at least five. Five poles, yeah. That way the pigs wouldn't be able to get to the iron sheets. Mm. They wouldn't be able to damage the iron sheets. 
as quickly as they did as they got older. But when they were piglets, they were, it was perfect. It was okay. It was, it was fine. That's why we say it is for starters, for beginners. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I would definitely urge you guys with the water catch, if you do have nipple drinkers, and we strongly urge that you get them yeah. because it's very important. Uh, when you see the images of our pigs here, one of the biggest differences is the availability of water. water because yeah. the type of feed that we give them, the maize brand is a bit powdery. And, and, and like anything else, even you guys out there, when you eat, you need to have a sip Something. here and there. Mm -hmm. What we learned initially when we were put using the jerry cans, yeah. <laughs> they would quickly step into step that water. Step on them. And the water was always dirty and they would not eat as much. So that True. also had a direct impact on the actual weight of the piglets. Yeah. So the more water they have, especially when they can drink anytime they're ready, please find out they're gonna grow much faster and be much healthier. Yeah. And um, yeah, and they'll definitely be able to eat more and put on the size that you want. If your goal is to go from start to finish, you'll be able to do it much faster that way. Yes, and another thing to feeding still, do not mix the feeds with the water. At least we've said this several times, but when you have new members in the family, for those ones who didn't know, do not mix your feeds with the water. Separate the water from the, from the feeds so that they can feed better because it will give them the urge to feed more and more. Yeah. Then another thing, of course, people were also having concerns about was this wire mesh here. Mm -hmm. Like whenever it's rainy, mm -hmm. doesn't the water go through? So what you have to know is this wire mesh here. It's a protection for, of course, predators like the birds, then also wild dogs, wild dogs things that we don't want to get through here. But if, even if it really rains, doesn't really go into inside. inside there even if it went inside a little bit we use imo wood shavings are there we keep we keep putting in more wood shavings every time and spray the imo liquid so that the smell is not there at all but in case you have any questions you can leave them down below so that we can definitely also come back and also address them So guys, whenever we get something really very nice, very interesting, something that is working for the farm, we want to share with you guys. That's why we always say that we need to be transparent. We want to also have happy farmers out there. So we have this detergent here. It is like a disinfectant. It is a disinfectant. Yeah, it's a disinfectant. It is called Truman Triovet. This is like a blessing to us. Yeah. In terms of cleaning, because we have our permanent structure there, we also use this for cleaning the surfaces of the structure and we also use this at our goat house. We also spray the IMO before, that's what we used to use, but we also now introduce this one here. Yeah, actually, with the use of this, we don't even have to spray the IMO. The IMO anymore. The, this is actually on the wooden surface itself. This is far more effective Yeah. and the impact lasts much longer. So from that standpoint, this was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> and we wanted to also bring that up to you guys. Up to you guys. Update. Yes. And it worked. It smells wonderful. It smells it's, so refreshing, it's guys. It's really, really nice, but it's very effective. And this is not a pay sponsorship. We're not being paid for this. We are it's not. It's just a very effective cleaning solution that we're currently using. Mm. We wanted to bring that to you guys. Is there anything else you want to tell any farmer out there, someone who is going to start piggery or even a mixed farm? Yes, pick the right breeds. Um, don't worry about quantity. Focus on quality. Yeah. Don't worry about the large numbers because the numbers are going to come. Yeah. You know, you just need to make sure that once you start, before you even start, you do your research, you take your time, mm. visit as many farms as you possibly can. But most importantly, this is going to be your own decision. Make sure you research your area, yep. find out what type of breeds people are familiar with. You know, perhaps you start with the breed that everybody's familiar with mm -hmm. and then slowly introduce what you might want to bring to the market. True. And um, be a leader. That's that's actually the, the, the main thing I want to stress with you guys. Here in Uganda, in East Africa as a whole, you know, there's a lot of hesitancy when it yeah. comes to farming. Farming, right? yeah, true. You know, whether it's your best friend or your sister, your mom, everybody basically, they want to watch you do it first. Exactly, before they jump in. <laughs> before it. they jump in. And once you jump in and they see you having success, then everybody wants to try to emulate what you're doing. Well, what I have to say to you guys, you know, all of you guys have a brain, you're smart, you can research, you have access to the internet, those of you who does. 
even if you don't have access to the internet, you have your local libraries. True. Read as much as you can and formulate your own opinion. Once you make your own decision, don't be afraid. You know, even when you make mistakes, the best part about mistakes, you get to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I always say, you know, there's no such thing as gonna, there's no such thing as perfection, but you can always give a perfect effort. True. So as long as you try, as long as you start, you know, that's the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Thank you so much. That is a good advice to anyone there, our dear farmers, our new farmers, of course, who are motivated. And of course, we've also got people who have actually started what we are doing here. Yeah, it's so rewarding to know that we are having an impact because initially, when we started this journey, we questioned whether or not we should actually we should. share this with the public because of the stigma of what it meant to be a pig, a farmer, pig farmer in this country exactly. and how people would perceive pig farmers in this country, mm -hmm. uh, the actual profession itself. <laughs> so we couldn't be more pleased to know that there are a lot of folks out there, young, who old, are inspired. that are inspired, that want to start. And congratulations to those of you who have already taken the first step. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of you are now at phase two and three on your projects. So yes. good for you. Keep up the good work. Welcome to the Value Farm family and welcome to your own endeavors in farming and um, may it be as rewarding to you guys as it's been for us. Yeah. And um, we hope to continue to bring you updates and more information. More information. As we get deeper into this process. So. And of course, we can't wait also for them to come to the farm for training. Mm -hmm. That is going to be very, very soon. Very soon. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Do not keep everything to yourselves. You may be knowing someone who has the passion but has not got the information. Tell, refer them to Value Farm channel. We are here to share ideas. We are here because remember, even in the comment sections, we get ideas from people. We've got so many comments from you guys that we also implement at the farm. That is the beauty about the family, about you guys being part of this family. We share ideas. So tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell your friends and family that there's value farm here. There's enough content. We are learning. We are transparent. And the most important thing we take away from this, hmm. and that's the beauty of the internet, that's the beauty of actually chronicling what we're doing here. No matter where you are or how difficult it is, you know you're not alone. You know, True. you can always reach out to us. You can always comment. You can always ask whatever question. Because a lot of the time, as you know, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning is not easy. It's not easy. But you guys energize what we do here as a group. I think they don't know the time we wake up in the morning. We wake up at 4.30. <laughs> Four, I get up at 4. <laughs> she gets up at 4.30. 4 that so, is early. <laughs> the farm is not, because we're still in the process of construction, the farm is not as close to where we live as most people would actually want to run a farm like this. And we don't want to be telephone farmers. No, no, That's no. That's another piece of advice I want to give to you guys. A project of this scale, whether you start now small, medium, you don't want to be a telephone farmer. True. You want to be on the ground. On the ground. You want to know what's going on. You want to do your surprise inspections. You want to make sure that you keep your staff on their toes because if you don't, you're going to end up paying the price and it's not going to be a pleasant price to pay. Um, but at the end of the day, what we were trying to tell you guys, you know, getting up at four o'clock in the morning is not fun, nor is it easy. But the best part about knowing that you guys are out there watching and supporting what we do and actually appreciate the kind of information that we bring to you guys makes it that much easier, easier. that much more enjoyable. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for supporting Value Farm. Please join membership if you want to be part of the family and also support Value Farm. There's a join button. You can become a member. We also have Patreon account that you can also support us, the farm as well. Yeah, that's what we had for you today. Please subscribe, like, share with all your friends and family. Till next time. Bye. Bye.